What's up guys? Justin here with the CGessentials.com back with another Blender modeling tutorial for you. So I thought we might talk about some different ways to model some things to scale inside of Blender. So we're going to start with a very simple shape in this video. And then um, if you have suggestions or other things you'd like to see, leave a comment down below and let me know. But for now, let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I thought for this video, we could talk through some of the basics of modeling some things to scale. And then in future videos, we can get a little bit more complex with this, but there's some principles I wanted to make sure that we talked about. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by just doing a shift A and I'm just going to add a cube in here and we're going to use the cube as kind of our room. So first thing you're going to notice is you want to make sure that you set your model units to whatever you want to model to. Um, and you can switch back and forth. But for me, for example, I'm going to jump in my scene and I'm going to switch my units. And for me, I'm going to start by going to Imperial and I'm going to set the length to feet. Now, I understand a lot of people don't use feet, but I'm going to use feet and inches for what I'm modeling. You can set this to whatever you want. And so to start off, I'm just going to create this cube to have a size of 10 feet. So something like that. So we're going to go back to Imperial. We're going to set this to feet. And we'll go ahead and place this object. I'm gonna jump in front view mode and I'm gonna move this up so that it aligns with my ground. One thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tab into edit mode and I'm gonna hit the three key in order to go to face select mode. And I'm just gonna do a shift click and I'm gonna hit the X key and delete the faces. So basically what I'm doing is I'm using this as a room that I can put my shelf in. And I'll move my Bonnie model out of the way right here. But now what we want to do is we want to start modeling out our shelf. And so one thing that I use a lot of is snapping. So I started off with CAD software. Um, and so I'm kind of used to the way that that works. So what, what that'll do is that'll allow some of your tools to snap to different edges and vertices in here. And you can turn that on just by clicking up here and clicking on snap to vertex. And we're just going to click on the little uh, we're just going to click on the little snap button in order to turn that on. So now, notice how if I do a shift right click and I hold that down and I move my mouse over the different points, this is going to snap to the different vertices. Well, what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to use this corner right here as an insertion point for my object. So I use a lot of snapping um, when I'm modeling. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just by modeling out one of the board pieces that I'm going to use. And so I'm going to make this very simple. We're basically going to create a bunch of 12 by 12 or 12 inch by 12 inch boards. We're going to use that to make like a corner shelf. So usually what I like to do when I'm trying to model in precision like this is I usually like to start by just adding a plane because what a plane does is it gives me control over the, um, it gives me control over the dimensions that we have in here. So in this case, for example, when I add my plane, before I click off of this, I'm gonna set this to have a size of one foot right here. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this. So I'm just gonna do a G. Notice how this is snapping to the wrong corner over here. What I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna do a shift Z so that I'm keeping this on the same plane and I'm gonna move this over here. And then if I tap the G key with my mouse over this corner, it allows me to snap to this corner. And so then what we've got is we've got this plane in here that's got kind of the size that we're looking for. Now I wanna tab in edit mode and I wanna extrude this a certain length. And in this case, I'm gonna assume this is maybe like a, we'll call it a 3 8 inch piece of plywood. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna jump my units to inches real quick, just cause that's gonna make this a little easier. And I'm gonna tap the E key to extrude this. And so usually what I do is I'll just click and then come over here and type in a value in the Z axis. I think you can actually type the value in while it's active, but this just feels like it gives me a little bit more control. So in this case, I'm just gonna type in a value of three eighths and hit the enter key. Then I can tab back into object mode. And so now I've got my first building block of the object that I want um, inside of Blender. Well, now I'm just gonna tap the R key and we'll just hit the Y key so that I can rotate this on the Y axis. And I'll just type in a value of 90 right here. So then I'm just gonna move this up, align it with this corner like this. And so that's given me my first piece right here. And so now what we wanna do is we want to create another copy of this. So I'm just gonna do a shift D 
to duplicate that. And I'm just going to move it up. I'm just going to tap the Z key. And we'll just move it up for right now. Then you can tap the R key and the Y key in order to rotate this and just type in a value of 90. So then I'm just going to move this based on this corner point. So G right here. So what that's done is that's allowed me to create this piece right here. All right, so now we're just gonna do something very similar, right? I'm just gonna take this and I'm just gonna do a Shift D to duplicate it and I'm gonna move it. Over here is fine for now. And then I'm gonna do an R, Z, and type in a value of 90. So then I can move this up. And so I'm gonna jump into wireframe mode real quick just so I can see this. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna type the G key and I'm just gonna move this over here. And notice how sometimes the snapping doesn't do exactly what we want it to do, so we have to play around with it a little bit. So I had to move it up right here and then move it down so that it would snap. All right, so now we're gonna to toggle back to viewport shading mode over here. And then I'm just going to create some more copies. So in this case, I'm just gonna do a Shift D. I'm gonna move this up. I'm gonna tap the Z key to lock it to the Z axis. And then we are going to move this down so that it aligns with this corner. All right, so then we'll just make a copy right here. And then now there's a couple different ways we could go about this. So for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna take all of these. I'm just gonna do a shift click to select them. Then I'm just gonna do a shift D to duplicate this. You could also use the array modifier to make multiple copies if you wanted to. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just do it this way. Mostly because I don't wanna deal with applying modifiers and other things like that. And so then the other thing we're gonna do, just real quick, is we're gonna add a wood material to this. And so you can download textures from anywhere, but in this case, I'm just gonna download something from Polyhaven. So we can just browse the textures in here. These are all free textures that you can download. And we'll just go with this plywood material. And I'm just gonna bring this down maybe like a 2K so that my, fi um, so my texture size isn't too big. And I'm just gonna download this. And so for something like this, we don't need to get really complicated with the material. All I'm gonna do, for example, is I'm just gonna jump over in the shader editor. And then I'm just gonna jump into material preview mode right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new material. So I'm just gonna do new. And one thing that I pretty much always do is I like to use an add-on, a blender add-on called, called Node Wrangler. So you can just find that in your add-ons and just make sure you've enabled Node Wrangler. What that's gonna do is that's gonna add a number of different tools for setting up materials. But in particular, there's an option for a Control Shift T. And so what a Control Shift T is gonna do is that's gonna allow you to go find those files. So in this case, for example, I wanna find my plywood material. It's this plywood 2K. And I just wanna bring all of these maps in. So I can just select them and then click on the button for principled texture setup. What that's gonna do is that's gonna set up a texture based on those materials. And I do have another add-on in here that I'm gonna turn off called node preview that we don't need for this. So this is set up UV mapping of my texture as well as the different maps that we want in here, my roughness, my normal, and my base color. Well then, what I'm gonna do, so all I'm gonna do is select all these other planes. So I'm gonna do a shift click like this. And then finally, I'm gonna click on this one. Notice how the last one you've selected becomes the active material. Well, now you can just do a control L. That's gonna link the materials together. Well, now that material has been applied to all of my different wood pieces inside a blender. So now I have a corner shelf that's been modeled to scale inside a blender. So then from there, we could do a lot of different stuff. Like for example, we could add lights and then render this out. So then you could come in here and you could add maybe like a area light or something like that in order to light this up, probably a couple, but then you could render this out inside a blender as well. And a lot of the time I'll toggle snapping off when I actually set up things like lights because the precision doesn't matter as much. So you usually just do a shift tab in order to turn that off.
All right, so then the other thing you might do is you might add a new collection over here. You might call this something like shelving, and then you might just drag all of these into that collection so that it's easily organized, and you can easily right click and select the objects and adjust them if you decide that you wanna do that as well. So leave a comment down below. Let me know if you like this kind of video with the precision modeling. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.